I wanted to start by confessing something that only a few people know, um, but it's a relevant story. So uh, you may know that I'm a reformed analyst, but I started my analyst career at a company called Jupiter, and uh, it was about nine years ago, and uh, this kid in shower shoes and sweatpants came in to brief me on his new company called Facebook. It was Mark Zuckerberg, and he thought he was the bomb, um, and he was in college, or maybe a year out, and I was the advertising analyst for, you know, digital. And so I'm like, you know, six years older than him or something. So I'm totally mature. I'm like, so what's your advertising model? And he's like, no, no, no. This is for the people. We don't believe in advertising. We don't believe in making money before making people engage with each other. And I looked at my other analyst that was in the room. Uh, you might know David Card. He was at GigaOM for a while. And we look at each other like, what the? Like, good luck with that, buddy. Um, so a year later, I get a desperate phone call with the newly hired head of ad sales saying, hey, do you want to run advertising for us at Facebook? And I had just become pregnant with my first kid, and I asked my husband, like, do you want to move to Palo Alto? Nah. So I didn't take the job. So that's the biggest mistake I've ever made. <laughs> Um, but I guess, you know, Mark is probably glad that he got into advertising, but I don't know how much any of us in the room are glad that Facebook got into advertising. Needless to say, uh, Larry and Sergey never did brief me, because they had already been in advertising since day one, and uh, did not want to give up some of their secrets. Uh, but we're, why we're here today is that, you know, we all have a common interest in advertising and in making money online um, and in other places. Uh, that, that's very different than Facebook and Google. We have quality content, we speak to people in a way that we've been speaking to them for a long time. It's not a new business model. Uh, it's about creating engaging content. And I think, you know, the idea is that we, go, we are going to have to work as one uh, to make sure that that important engaging content and those experiences are still around for people uh, and they're not just looking at stuff that Facebook and Google make. Uh, so what we did is we did a big survey. Um, and so thank you for anybody here that answered the survey. Uh, we got a lot of people. Uh, we culled it a little bit. We got like over 250 responses, and we took the 83 that were executives from premium publishers. So we really wanted to make it representative of the people at op-ed. Uh, and we asked them a bunch of questions about how to stay profitable, what does your business look like, where's it going, uh, and what we found is that you're all starting to resemble one another. Uh, and so that could be a good thing, or it could be a little bit of a dangerous thing. And so, you know, what I want to do is present the findings to you today as a nice context for the rest of the discussions. Because we have common, maybe they're not enemies, maybe they're frenemies, um, sometimes they're enemies, um, but we also are common to one another. So how do we play in such a way that each of us can be profitable, but each of us also can unite in the right way as the premium media business uh, to make sure that we sustain that for, for a long time going forward? Uh, so the key finding here, which I know this is blowing your mind, digital is the future. How many people are just totally shocked by that? Um, yeah, so not exactly the biggest headline in the world, but I think it's really cool because, again, as a reformed analyst, I've been asking this question for, at this point, 10 years, and maybe 11. You would be surprised how many, maybe not, crusty execs, until maybe two years ago, was like, mm, yeah, sure, but our other businesses are much more important and much bigger. Uh, digital's great. And, you know, it took a while for a lot of traditional media companies to really, you know, come up to the, the realization that consumer behavior is not going to slide backwards. Um, consumer behavior has obviously accelerated like crazy. If you think of the mobile adoption curve, it's gone so fast that I think nobody has a chance anymore to say that digital's not the future. Um, but what's also interesting here is not only is making money from our digital properties number one, it's actually more important than staying profitable. And so ironically, we're talking about the profitable publisher. A lot of responders said, you know what, actually I'd rather just make sure digital is doing well, and if other parts of my business have some bumps along the way, I'm going to make, make that choice, I'm going to take that risk. And so, you know, really what I see are three different categories when, when we break up uh, the types of responses that we got. There are companies that are coming out of the print world, companies coming out of the TV world, and companies that grew up within digital. Uh, and they're coming together. So this idea of convergence isn't just convergence that, um, you know, you want to address one audience across channels wherever they are and your sales teams converge. There's actually a convergence of content that's happening in which everybody is competing for that on-demand customer. 
everybody wants to have the video in front of that person while they're you know, looking at their mobile phone in line at Starbucks. Uh, so you're no longer just competing on the newsstand or competing on prime time, you're competing for eyeballs with all of these different types of companies. Oh, and there is a delay. Um, that's okay. Uh, today's goals are driven by a digital future. So, you know, we asked about, well, okay, what are you doing right now? What are the things that you're focused on? And if we just break it out by those three categories, um, TV companies are focused on video. And it's not a surprise. This idea of time shifted watching, you want to watch something that's under two or three minutes. Consumers are consuming things that are shorter, that are easier to get um, on mobile devices. Uh, and there are new companies that are popping up that are creating these things very inexpensively uh, that you know, giant TV companies have to now think about. Uh, so maybe it's going to be building, maybe it's going to be buying, uh, but video is definitely a huge concern for television companies. Print companies are really looking at sa increasing sales effectiveness and improving technical capabilities. The print companies have had their business model changed already, while the TV companies are sort of just moving into that now. Uh, print has had many years to sort of discuss, okay, it looks like we got dragged into digital, what do we do now? Um, very much they want to be sophisticated, they want to be flexible, uh, and they want their sales team to be empowered to compete now that they're selling against so many different types of publisher companies. Uh, and digital, oddly, while they created a lot of fake scale through non-viewable ads and uh, lots of impressions that, uh, you know, split up the page and create beautiful, uh, customer experiences are actually interested in increasing scale for real this time. Uh, and so what that means is, look, we're selling out a video. <laughs> so how do we get more video uh, if you really want to come down to it? Uh, so everybody is trying to figure out what do we do right in order to be important when the advertiser comes to us and says, how are you different? So if we look at um, a couple of just, just details that we got from the survey by this sort of category definition, uh, TV customers biggest concern or biggest priority is really focusing on shifting consumer behavior. Out of everybody in the last year, the ones, the companies that got the most sideswiped by consumers' massive adoption of smartphones are TV customers, are TV publishers. And so if you look at their multi-screen and time-shifted viewing habits being their top choice, uh, this was far and away the most important thing for them to focus on and not so much for the other types of publishers. So it's a real change in the way that their consumer um, is viewing what they provide for them that, again, publishers from the print side have already had many years to contend with that shift. Maybe because of those years that the print publishers have been battling it out on the digital playing field, they were the ones that were most pessimistic uh, about digital in general. So we asked, basically, you know, what, what do you think about this question? You know, answer yay or nay. Um, publishers are at the losing end of the advertising ecosystem. Uh, and basically, uh, about half of publishers on the print side said, yeah, we're pretty much on the losing end. Surprisingly, TV and digital didn't say that. And again, as, as an analyst, when I really look at the math that happens in this ecosystem, publishers have had a tough time. Advertisers have been beating up publishers on price. Middlemen have been taking a huge tech tax. There's a lot of complexity to deal with, and a lot of it falls on publishers. So I was actually surprised that print publishers were the only ones that were pessimistic. I was also glad, because I think that it means, and what we'll talk about today, is that there is a path forward. There are a lot of opportunities for publishers to do well and to profit, regardless of how tough and complicated it's been in the past. If we look at digital, again, I just wanted to show you how scale uh, competed with the other questions that we asked. Digital, is more, digital publishers are more concerned about scale than they are about decreasing CPMs. And I wanted to bring this up because of programmatic. Digital publishers have embraced programmatic the most, and they complain about decreasing CPMs on the programmatic side. So I was surprised to see that even though programmatic has been you know, a big cause of concern around CPMs, scale was still a big deal. So again, we're talking about convergence in a certain way here, where everybody is coming together, content starting to compete in, on different platforms and formats, consumers become a single audience that moves across platforms. Publishers have to prepare for this reality. Publishers actually should have been preparing for this reality two years ago. Um, so when we ask about that in particular, what are you doing in the face of convergence? Print publishers said, really what we need to get good at is video ad serving. So again, proof that companies are starting to resemble one another, right? Print publishers are saying we have to be able to serve lots and lots of video. 
Um, TV publishers are trying to build up digital data. They need a DMP, and they're investing in cookie data. Uh, so you think about a business that's basically, you know, been GRP focused and focused on very high level household metrics where, you know, they haven't had to layer on and slice and dice a lot of data, totally changing their, their tune on that. Uh, and again, that's to compete in the digital space. And then digital is, is looking to find new ways to differentiate. So digital's top priority is to get better at native advertising, which in fact print publishers have been good at until now. So again, starting to resemble one another uh, better. And you know, if you look at the, the way that this affects operations, because all of us here, you know, operative helps with the operations behind all of these, these macro trends, it's the sellers that have to deal with the complexity as, as advertisers ask for more and more, as there are more channels, more screens, more ad types. Uh, the sellers are still forced to cobble deals together. So if you just look at some of the issues that you know, arise, we asked what are the highest priorities for your digital team? Educating sales to sell these technical offerings is a big challenge. Getting a single seller out in front, um, you know, actually that um, poignant clip about what Kurt was saying, Getting one person to be able to talk to an advertiser effectively to in, about data, about technology, about delivery, and then to make it compelling because in the, it's really about your brand and the value of your content, that's a lot to ask of a sales guy or girl. And so how do you do that well? Um, that's a big challenge. And certainly, you know, there are things that can, can, can go behind that. Um, the other side of it, the second most important one is, okay, so the deal has been sold through. How do you make sure that you're maximizing your yield? How are you making sure that you're getting the best price, that you're moving that up the yield curve, that it's not down there in the doldrums getting you know, a dollar CPM when it's actually a valuable audience? Um, so speaking of programmatic, because what's a digital conversation about advertising without talking about programmatic? I have a couple of insights to show you uh, from the, the second white paper that we did that just pulled out the programmatic data. And what you see is that while almost everybody said they were doing programmatic, it was almost nine in 10. It was uh, like eight and a half in 10 publishers said, we have programmatic as, as a part of our digital business. A huge percentage are not even making any money yet or are making very little. Um, and in fact, more than half are making less than 10%. Um, there is a sizable chunk, the, the black pie over there, you know, 50% or more, um, from the exchanges. So you, what you have seen are a couple of publishers sort of go all in. They said, you know, my sales team is really expensive. I'm not profitable right now. I'm going to go lean. And when I do, you know, I'm going to just put everything out on the exchange and see how I do. Um, I was actually surprised to see how big that 50% or more uh, minority was. So that is just something to note. Uh, while the majority of the respondents are still in the early days, there is a sizable chunk that has just gone all in with, with this. Uh, on the other side, though, what you see with um, programmatic direct, sort of the premium side, there's a lot of work to be done. A lot of it is still very manual. So when we talk about Jason's yield curve, he, he said the version that he showed you isn't what it really looks like. Programmatic di direct almost disappears because it's so small still. Um, and that's the one that sort of has the most promise for premium publishers. It's like, if I could automate the stuff I get high CPMs on, my life would be great. So, you know, speaking of programmatic, there are a lot of issues that we should be addressing here. There's too much manual labor. That was the top issue. It's difficult to manage the quality of the ads that we get. So, you know, you're just drinking from the fire hose a little bit here. They don't make enough money to justify investing. So you're just throwing bodies at the problem. Um, you know, everybody wants to make programmatic work, but it's still hard to understand exactly how you can operationalize it, um, empower your sales team to still bring stuff up to the higher price direct bucket and, and still do well. Um, yet, that being said, the majority is still saying, but you know what? Sure, digital is the future, but so is programmatic, um, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, you look at about half and half, right? So if you just look at the blue, that's people that agree. Half agreed that programmatic RTB is the future of their business, and half agree that programmatic premium is the future of their business. So this is what it looks like to me. People believe in technology. They believe in operationalizing a lot of this complexity. That was two big words in one sentence. And you know, they really want to make sure that they're going to be there to capture new revenue streams that are coming through these new places. And so it's not going away. It's a matter of how do we make it profitable? How do we make it fit into the rest of our business? And what we found is that you know, it's about solving really normal day-to-day -day technical problems. 
It's about solving operational problems. It's about talking about working together. How do we achieve scale by working together? Publishers across print, TV, and digital overwhelmingly agreed that in order to sell across channels effectively, they need two things. A single platform that supports the entire sales business, shameless plug, but also coming straight out of the survey, and common audience metrics. So for any of you guys who have been talking about data over the last few days, and there are many of you, it's interesting to think that all of us have been using different words, different terms, different measurements for audience data. If we want to achieve scale, is it better for us to connect to one another and create something that's bigger and better and more interesting than what Facebook and Google have? They have created their own definition. Some of you are talking about this um, over the last few days. Google and, and Facebook have created their own ways to measure success. They've created different ways to talk about what they sell. Uh, why can't we do the same thing? And maybe we do it with the, the massive audience that we have. So here are just sort of the proof, that, the proof points for those last two insights. To sell across channels, we need common audience metrics. 70% agreed that that's important. To sell across channels, we need a single platform that supports our entire sales business. More than half agreed that this is important. Um, so just, uh, Dennis, if you're in the audience, thanks for participating in the survey. Here's a quote that I took out of there. Um, We're taking a holistic approach and betting on a few systems that tie everything together. Having an OMS tied directly to our ad server creates consistency. We're also betting on our DMP. Building a first party data asset that sellers can access on top of any other deal will add a lot of value to our inventory. It's about a value add. It's about saying, I understand the value of my yield curve and I'm moving it up. I'm not just going to take the bait and have a middleman tell me what price I should be selling my inventory for. I'm going to know my audience value and my content value. So there are a couple of things to, you know, I want to leave you with as you go talk in the round tables, ask questions. The future is digital, sure, but the future really is about convergence. So the word digital is the same thing as saying media at this point. A consumer doesn't care. A consumer is agnostic at this point. They could read an article, they could be watching a video, they want to be entertained, they want good content. So it's a matter of making sure that we value that content and that audience effectively and we reach them profitably. So programmatic, it seems like, will probably stay bifurcated for quite a while. You're going to have the RTB exchange, which is good or bad, potentially undervalued inventory and undervalued audiences stay there, but then you're going to have whatever we call premium programmatic that empowers sellers to automate a lot of what they do. And that will still encourage conversation, there will still be a lot of uh, custom activity that goes on between the seller and the advertiser, um, and hopefully the programmatic tools will simply make that easier and more scalable as they mature. So here's an interesting one. Um, this, is a, this is sort of a favorite of Lauren's, and I wanted to say it on stage so that everybody thinks about this. There are some of you in the room that have excess supply and some that have excess demand. Some of you have a lot of content and some of you have a big audience. Um, there are ways for you guys to work together. So is it possible that some of the content companies in the future say, I can maybe do programmatic, I don't want a sales team anymore. But you know what? I work with some really big companies that have such a huge sales team that if they rep my inventory, I'm okay with that. Uh, and is that a good thing or a bad thing? Some of you already do this in other markets. Does the digital market start looking more like other markets? Um, and as this happens, I think that M&A is going to heat up across media and tech. So we've seen uh, companies like Verizon and Comcast acquire uh, on both sides, both media companies and tech companies, building huge audience databases, for example. How is this going to keep going? Um, even companies like Meredith, who two years ago I would call maybe one of the crustiest of, of traditional print publishers, is investing heavily in M&A. And so, you know, you have a very different way of growing. It's not an organic growth, it's inorganic growth in our market. Um, and I think it's, it's going to be maybe one of the few ways that the, the bigger media companies can truly compete with Facebook and Google, who build their own systems from the ground up. Uh, it's, it's important because it, it's how we're going to achieve scale across channels. Uh, so I want to thank you guys for participating in the survey, for participating today. Um, and remember that this is real data that you guys um, gave me. So this is not my pontification. This is what you're telling me is the truth uh, about where we are today.